Our very special guest today is Annie Holmes. She is an artist who loves to use art as a way to bridge relationships and connect people. She is also a family liaison and home visitor in a local public school in West Illinois, which is not the west side of Chicago, but right outside of Chicago. And so next slide. So the ways to engage for those of you who attend, you are familiar for the new people, welcome. Um, if you're not talking, please put your phone on mute. When you're ready to comment, you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you, but you will have to unmute yourself first. So in order for us to hear you, be patient with us as we try to read the chat. Sometimes everybody's putting all of their great thoughts, ideas and questions and it moves a little fast. So we'll try to get to every comment as we can. And then feel free to type your comments in the group chat or your questions. And just again, make sure it's going to all panelists and all attendees. Next slide. So we operate from these agreements is to ensure that we all have a great time doing this hour together. We're gonna to speak from our own experience. We're gonna use I statements. We're gonna operate under the golden rule, which is we're gonna treat each other the way we would like to be treated. And we wanna bring our full presence. So please no multitasking. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Annie and she's gonna give you a little bit more about her background um, beyond what I shared. Well, thank you, first of all, for the nice introduction, and I am happy to be here again. I had a wonderful time with uh, those who joined me last week, and I'm really hoping that we will have a wonderful time again today. Um, I know that we were trying to figure out, um, I think we're going to do a poll to see how many people were um, sitting in on this last week, just so I can get an idea of what I should be focusing on. So um, thank you to Dee for popping up that poll. So if you don't mind, please answer that. It's very simple, like were you here last week with me? Yes or no? Um, and then um, if you could just put your answer in there, then we will, uh, we or I will know, you know, a little bit more about uh, how to tailor this talk today. And as you're doing the poll, please remember that if you agree to the agreements to type I agree in the chat. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Hilda. How does it look with the survey? Are we getting close to having a good chunk of answers? Um, yes, we have about 73% of people voted. We have uh, close to 60% that weren't here. Um, so they 60% are new to this. Okay, so that's good to know. So we have a we have a lot of new people today. So that's great. Um, so then that just gives me a little bit of an idea. So um, for those of you uh, who were here last week, there might be some repetition uh, of, you know, like me talking about the different projects, but I'm hoping to give a little bit more attention to some of the things that I didn't get to last time. And then also, um, I just wanted to remind everybody, as we did last time, if you have any questions or any thoughts or comments or reflections as, you know, like I'm talking, feel free to put that in the chat. Um, Alexander is going to keep an eye on that and, you know, like try to make sure that those questions get inserted because I feel like it's a little bit easier if I answer things as we're talking about them or, you know, comment on them further instead of we try to wait to the end and, you know, maybe the, the, the train of thought has sort of been lost a little bit or you know like we've already moved into discussing something else so um i will try to get to those um things uh right away so with all that said um thank you for everybody who has commented uh, back already to that you're agreeing to participate in this so d could you please move to the next slide <clears throat> 
So actually as part of my introduction, so as Alexandra said, I am an artist. I live in West Chicago, Illinois. So just about an hour west of the city of Chicago. Uh, I'm originally from Denmark. Uh, I moved to the United States in January of 1999. So um, this is my 21st year here. So it's about half of my life I've been in the United States. So we can say, you know, like I'm half and half now, you know, I'm half Danish, half American. Um, so what I like to do, um, I'm an artist and, you know, like in the beginning when I was making art, I like to do things that you put on the wall, you know, like an example here on the back of me is a painting. Uh, and, you know, like I like to, to paint and put things up on the wall, but I felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect with the audience, like unless that I would hang out in the gallery or, you know, like I would invite people to my house to look at what I was doing. It was really hard to have that conversation with what other people were getting from my artwork. So um, that sort of drove me to sort of slowly um, to start engaging other people in my art making process in many different ways. So what I would like to start out with, because I feel like this is um, this is a good little activity um, that sort of nails two things in one. So I would like for you all to participate in this activity. Um, it takes about four minutes. Uh, so the next slide that we will go to contains an audio file and there will also be some lyrics for a song that I wrote. Um, this is going to be a quick introduction to my bio. Uh, so I would like for you all to sing along. You know, you don't need to worry about how well you sing at all. Uh, you don't need to worry about looking silly because I can't see you and I cannot hear you. Uh, I had a little funny incident of like, I tried to go back and watch the recording from last week and, you know, was seeing how I was rocking out on the screen myself and then the audio wasn't completely in sync. So I was just laughing at myself, you know, for, you know, sitting here and rocking out. So I will do that again. I don't mind, you know, like being totally silly and, you know, like hopefully I'll be able to laugh at this video later too. Um, um, so yeah, without further ado, I'd like to move on to the next slide. And then uh, Dee, also, if you could, um, if everybody feel like they're ready, you know, if you need to take a sip of water, um, I would encourage you to sing along. And if, if it's hard for you to sing along, like just on a regular part of the text, you know, at least, you know, like on the course, please feel free to give it all you have. Um, so yes, so let's um, get started. Chicago, my dreams you make come true. 
has been great. Chicago artists are the best friends I've ever made. I don't know how to end this verse, my life's still going on. But thank you all and each of you for singing on my song. Oh, Chicago, my dreams you may come true. There's room for all us artists here, the sky is what's well blue. Oh, Chicago, my dreams you may come true. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that I, I saw Alexandra was singing along. So I hope everybody else had an opportunity to hum along a little bit at least. So. I was trying for the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. I, I mean, I saw you were trying to sing some of the other stuff too. So um, anyway, so, you know, as um, one of the things I talked a little bit about last time was, you know, in Denmark and in, in, in particular, in my family, there's this tradition that when you get together to celebrate something, typically a birthday uh, or wedding or um, baptism or confirmation or any sort of like special occasion, there would always be somebody in your family that had this secret songwriter um, talent and they would home write, you know, like home, I would say knit together this um, home written song that would sort of highlight funny episodes from your life or, you know, like just silly things, typically things you would have put in a speech anyway, but then, then you would um, make this song and you would um, create this, um, we call it, what is that, a sangskula, which means a song hider. <laughs> I don't know, it's a bad direct tr translation, but it could be something that you were really into, you know, like if you played soccer, maybe it was a soccer ball, and then all the songs were stuffed in there, and it would be brought in to the person who was being celebrated as this gift, and you would open it up, and then it would be all these um, songs uh, in there that you would distribute out to um, to everybody who was participating in the party and then we would all sing the song together a lot of times you know like maybe the person um you know like me with this with this song was you know like had to do some a little bit stretches here and there to make it work with it you know just find a tune that everybody would know and that not everybody everything would sync up or everybody would know how to read the song so it wasn't perfect but it was usually a lot of fun and just um me thinking back of all these shared experiences, you know, like at these parties, it really sort of like brought the party together. Um, I see that there's a, a couple of people that are commenting in the post, but I can't. Yeah. Well, I'll read it for you. So Rosemary said that she was not able to see the words, but was able to hum along. And I just wrote back and told her, same here, I need to have my glasses on, but the, the song was really catchy. <laughs> Yeah. So we had a little bit of, you know, I meant to put it in the chat, but last time when we tried to do that, it didn't really work. And I was concerned we only could do a little bit at a time. And I was concerned I wouldn't be able to both sing and like multitask of like putting everything in the chat at the same time. So we ended up like scrunching it a little bit together and just sticking it in on the slide. Um, and so I'm, I'm sorry uh, that you couldn't, but hopefully, um, Hopefully you still enjoyed, you know, like being able to hum, hum along. So the idea is, you know, to, to um, create this shared experience and be part of it. And obviously, you know, like to have fun. And the image that you see in the slide here is from, um, it's from, for those of you who are familiar with Chicago, Franklin Park, like in the Franklin Park area, there are, um, there is a little gallery called uh, the Franklin. It's an outdoor backyard gallery run by Adra Soto and her husband. And they um, invited me to come and do a project there. And that's um, that it was another time. It wasn't this song. I had written another song specifically celebrating the Franklin. And um, I, I got invited up to be on the stage. And what I did was actually invited my entire audience to come up on stage with me. And we were all singing together on the stage. And that's sort of like rounded off the evening so it was people walked away from there really happy and said oh yeah we just needed this you know after the evening and and we're just really um energized and enthusiastic so um the same you know like if we were to celebrate it at you know it was a celebration at a birthday party or something and there were people in the party you didn't know you know and you ended up in line go to the bathroom or something and you'd be like oh yeah that song was really funny and you had that in common already even though you did not know each other you already had established that 
the commonality that you had both participated in singing that song and that part didn't really rhyme and you know like you just had that you just had that experience I couldn't really get up on the high notes or whatever it was so you, you sort of have a starting a starting point um and I really feel like that's that's like a beautiful thing and so um Last time we ended up talking about this a little bit because there was a lot of comments about people. There was a lot of teachers on the on the webinar last time that talked about them using songs and singing together in the classroom, and um, and we got to talk about with my kids too. I have three kids, and with all of them, uh, I actually used with my oldest when he was born. I just took a song that I knew, used to sing in high school that was really simple. And so whenever I needed to calm him down when we were driving in the car or trying to put him to sleep, I just changed it and I would just sing his name to that song. It really fit. Um, and then when my daughter was born, my son was like, we should sing that song. And we just changed it into her name. And then when my youngest was born, you know, like they were both, we need to make a song. My youngest name is Lars Otto. Well, Lars Otto. <laughs> so then we, we've reused this. And so we would sometimes in the car, we will just sing it together. And just as something about like all of us, it's so simple. The kids can easy sing it. It's just their name. And, you know, we all sing together driving. And I just saw something beautiful about that. And it sort of also calms every, everybody you know <laughs> so annie i am a poet and a hip-hop mc and i do the same with my daughter since they were little and we do what's like called freestyling so like i'll start a line and they'll rap and now that they're 14 it used to be really fun but now that they're 14 one of them actually tries to battle rap me so that's like always hilarious when we do <laughs> yeah. it so yeah it's it's always a great experience with the kids and keeps everybody you know just together and just have a little bit of fun break up the day yeah, I think it's it's really it's really awesome, you know, like being able to do that exchange. And I've I've you know, like I was sort of like thinking, you know, like in the beginning because kids don't really have words, but you know, like when they're really little. But you know, like with my daughter, she very quickly, like when she was little, started humming along, you know, like without even. And then you know, when she started being able to sing her name, you know, like that was easy. It was you know, like one of the first things. So yeah, and then you know, like then they I'll let them decide what we sing. Sometimes we just sing all of us, like. The, all of us you know we sing it in Danish because I'm teaching my kids Danish but we would just sing the word all of us together all of us together <laughs> in the song so yeah so it's it's just a nice it's just a nice little thing that we have we have together just like our family and I feel like that brings that's you know like something that is very personal to us but also sort of like brings us together you know like especially if there's some screaming going on in the car or, you know, something, then it's, it's sort of like brings, everything brings everybody back together and brings everybody down and it, and it typically works. So, <laughs> so we can go on to the next slide. So today I just want to try to talk, these are some of the different projects. So the Oh Chicago was a song. Uh, I will also talk a little bit about the immigration project uh, and networking. It's another project that I've done, Plasticity or Plastic plasticity, <laughs> however you choose to pronounce it, getting my name out there, resonance, and then the stream Great Wall of Exchange and remapping uh, West Chicago. And then I hope to show a video that I didn't get to show last time uh, called In This Together. And then I'll talk a little bit about also a project called Potebo, which means language rugs in English. And then I uh, have a little Be Strong Families project at the end that everybody can participate in. So just so you have an idea. <laughs> So Annie, Maggie said my sixth grade teacher would give the class a break and we would stand up at our desk and sing together with my family. We have songs we sing aloud and create um, and crazy on long drives. Yeah, and I think, you know, like it, it's, 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 it's something that just really like somehow it's like it must be the vibration of like the singing of, you know, like you together. Like I've read, you know, I'm really interested in like trauma and like how trauma affects the body, but that's actually one of the things that I was reading about, like the vibration from like singing and sound releases some of this trauma. So I think, you know, like I feel like it's a grounding experience. So it sounds like, you know, like that's a little bit, you know, like the same. Uh, and if anybody else has experience with that, you know, like feel free to share, you know, like even if you'd want us to unmute you so you can share about that too, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we can move to the next slide. <laughs> So um, I just wanted to sort of like give a little bit of background. So when I first came to the United States, I actually came as an au pair and I was a live-in nanny that were like, that lived with a uh, family on the north side and in Northbrook, if anybody's familiar with that on the north side of Chicago. And then um, 
uh, after my year as an au pair, I en ended up going, as I said, I didn't want to go back. So I enrolled and uh, I got a BFA from um, Columbia College and I studied photography. And uh, I was enrolled in school in 2001 when um, the tragedy of 9-11 happened. And what was really interesting was there was a lot of things that happened after that because two of the suicide pilots uh, had been here on expired student visas. So that obviously meant like, all of a sudden, you know, like there was a lot of Homeland Security all of a sudden started focusing on students and student visas. The system was really, you know, old fashioned at the time. Everything was done on paper and in sitting in a file somewhere. Um, it wasn't digitized like everything is today. So that was why like it was possible for somebody's status to, you know, run out and not, you know, like be deported or asked to leave or you know renew their status um but so what it meant was there was just so many changes and i was here as an international student from denmark and i was the only one from denmark and so i felt like really alone and very sort of isolated in this and really felt like i needed to come together with other people that were having the same experience and so i connected with a lot of the other international students at the college and we were talking a lot about this because we had so many meetings like there was probably a meeting every week or every other week you know updating us about new information and what we had to do and couldn't do and 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 all these things all of a sudden felt like they were very heavy you know on um our shoulders and you know sort of overwhelming um, and one of the things that was proposed was that all international students would have to now be fingerprinted and photographed and you would have to carry around this card that had a trackable chip in it you know like all sorts of things uh, not all of it happened but um, what then I started thinking about was how can I you know like bring um, how can I bring that sort of like all those issues and concerns together and so I did this project and these are all of my friends that you see in these pictures and it's not all of my friends it's not all of the pictures either um, but these are all fellow international students um, who was sort of going through a similar uh, situation as me. And what I did was I asked them to collaborate with me by voluntarily giving me uh, fingerprints so I could read and, and letting me photograph them. And so I could recreate their portrait using their fingerprint, you know, to sort of like as this, this whole, um, you know, commentary or, you know, like highlighting this whole idea of like collecting biometric information. Mm, I was wondering how, I was like, how is that pixelated? What does she do? I couldn't wait for you to say that is really neat. Yeah, so Hill Young Lee, who is the, the up, a little bit up closer one here in the front, that's her thumbprint. So I, I thumbprint, I just got one fingerprint, you know, like the thumbprint. I got maybe 12 variations to different tonalities. And that's uh, how I recreated all of these. So the idea was, and you see that in the picture that's above her, is like when you go up really close, the picture sort of falls apart. It's really overwhelming. It's hard to sort of like make sense of what is this. But when you step back that it's far enough back that it's the size of a passport photo, it looks like a passport photo. So sort of, you know, like giving this idea like the, the multiple levels of immigration, like from afar, it looks like it's simple, but once you are in it, it's really complicated and overwhelming. Um, but what was really interesting with it, that was my intent, right? But it really brought my fellow, you know, international student friends more together. Like they found, you know, some community and like having participated in the project. And that was sort of like my first touch on really working with other people to try to make art together. Because obviously I could not have made it without them. Uh, if I had just done it by myself, it wouldn't have spoken the same, you know, like it wouldn't have had the same significance. But um, this is just, you know, like a photo from one of the exhibits that I had where it really, I was able to create this whole room that you got in and you were sort of being looked at at all these giant passport photos, you know, so when you stood in one side, it was, but you know, as you got up close, you, you saw the complexities. Uh, we can move on to the next slide, unless there are any questions about this. There were no questions, but it just was uh, eldest did when she was growing up, her sisters and um, her would take turns and challenge each other and sing a piece of a song without repeating it. So she was just adding on to what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, and I think that that's, you know, like, that's a nice sort of like little connection. I mean, that sort of like builds really sync, you know, like you really have to be in sync in order to do that. And it's, it's also a way like being really attentive and listening to each other. And, you know, like all those things, you know, like, it's also part of building relationship, because if you had one unruly sibling that didn't want to participate in that, that would have been messed up, right? <laughs> so, you know, like, it, 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 it 
it, it has to do like with the relationship building too. I, it's lovely. Thank you for sharing and for everybody who has shared. So we can um, play this video. So I will just talk a little bit about this project too. So this project is called networking and um, it was one that I started together with New York May Wong uh, and another artist um, friend of mine. Um, she was a Grew, she's Chinese, but she grew up in Malaysia, and then she came to the United States, and we met in a class uh, doing performance art, which is, you know, doing happenings, that kind of thing. It's not like theater, but more sort of doing something that's a little bit strange to make people think, and it sort of like runs with this other, this other dimension. It's not sculpture, it's not installation, but it's um, performance, like time-based work. And so one of the things while I was in college, I had this great um, international student advisor, Simon Ogeto from Kenya. And um, he would always, he had been to the college for a couple of years and graduated everything. And then he, I don't know how, but he ended up getting a job as an international student advisor. We all loved him. And so we would always come in and hang, hang out with him. And he would like try to help us figure out how to navigate, you know, going to a college in the United States, you know, like all of us internationals. And he would always tell us that it's all about networking and it's all about getting your name out there. So you see now where I've gotten a little bit inspiration for some of my projects from. Um, so this project that New York May Wong and I did was, you know, we met through this class and we had, um, in essence, you know, we just had this class in common. We were paired up together to do a, do a project together. But what we got to do was we actually got really, we got to know each other. And then we got interested in, you know, like how we through each other got to know other people. And then um, as part of some of the things that we ended up doing together was that I taught her how to knit. So growing up, she had not been into all these like feminist chores or, you know, like things that we, she, you know, sort of thought of as feminist because she, she wanted to break away from that. Um, and what I grew up with was knitting was something that was, you know, just brought me a lot of good memories. It was something my grandma tried to teach me. My mom taught me like, I was probably five years old when they tried to do it the first time. It's a very, you know, connecting experience of, you know, us sitting together and helping each other and just as you get to know it, just knitting and talking in Denmark. And, and I know also here, um, there is a lot of, you know, knitting clubs and knitting groups, just people getting together and knitting and, you know, like you, you knit and you just talk and it's, it is like building this community. And so we were interested in like, there's a little bit of play on word also was to like visualize this, how this networking and how bringing to people together and like the influence that people have on your life, how that works. So we did this through this project. We actually started out, and this is just a video documenting the project as it's been going on for many years. Like this is, I think was from 2013 or 14, I forget. Um, but as, um, as we started out, I actually just, I knit a row. I passed the knitting needles to her. She knit a row. And when we had about, you know, like maybe like three, four or five inches. Um, we put knitting needles in the other end and we sat really close and we knit further and further apart. And then as people came in and joined, we, we can just replay the video to have some other visual. Um, as people came in and joined, we were just putting knitting needles in other places. And then we were just all, you could, you could work on it, anybody. And you didn't have to be good at knitting. This could be your first time. We would show you how. Um, and this piece has just really evolved over the years. I've never just sat and knit on it by myself or she hasn't done that. We've always taken it out in public and invited other people to join us. And so you continue to still like to this day that it, it goes on or is it just somewhere now in the gallery? So right now it is sitting in a suitcase in my front porch, ready to be invited somewhere else. <laughs> nice. you know, it, it reminds me of the, the act. And this is just so awesome. I'm really enjoying your presentation, probably because I just love art. But um, it reminds me of African-American quilting. If you're familiar with that, it's the same concept of bringing people together and telling the story and transmission of some type of, um, you know, lesson or something. So this is very fascinating. Yeah, it, 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 and somebody brought that up last time too. And I have, I have to admit, even though, you know, my mom was a seamstress, 
my sewing abilities are not really that great. I think I just don't have the patience. Like I can sew if I have to, but the knitting is easy. Like I can do, I can do it. I can't do fancy stuff. Like I cannot do pearl and all this other. I just knit one way. I think I just do knit. Um, and then, but I can talk while I'm doing it and I can engage with other people. And that was sort of the, you know, like the idea of this, it, you know, it's just easier for me to turn off. The <laughs> yeah, and I think it's like the trauma thing too, because you're engaging both parts of your brain. So it's like building your resilience at the same time. So it's awesome. This would be like something really great to do with youth. Um, yeah. You know, like an art therapy type of situation. Yeah, and I think, you know, sometimes, and with knitting, where I think a lot of times people are intimidated by it because you have to make something. And I, let me tell you, I have made a bunch of scarves. Like I probably knit 20 scarves, you know, because that's what I'm really good at. I can just do the straight part. I may be trying to do a few hats, but you know, like in a backwards kind of way. But I feel like with this and really the comments that I've gotten when I've taken this places. So, you know, like I travel a lot with this, like in 2006, when we started this, we really, it's been to Miami, it's been to Hollywood, it's been to uh, Minneapolis a lot in the Chicago area like it's just it's been a lot of places I took it to Denmark a couple of times you know like for people to knit on it there um there I've had over 800 people knit on it at this point um and it's just really interesting to see like everybody's adding their own little thing people know like how to knit they add in intricate patterns so they can go back and find it people who don't know drop a lot of stitches other people are like I can't deal with this and they fix it but the nice thing is there's so many people that actually learned how to knit on this because there isn't this sort of like pressure that it has to turn into something it's just that we are doing it and we're doing it together it's a you can practice and people really enjoyed that there wasn't that pressure to do that you know so it's just I feel like that's you know like and again um I mentioned this last time too, was I once took it to the uh, the Thompson Center in downtown Chicago. I was invited to do it there for a week. And I think it was just like in the middle of the day when you had a lot of people, you know, for those of you who are familiar, you know, like in the under, there's the underground or the, the L, you know, if you want to take the train, you have to go to the basement or, and there it's like a public building. So if you need to do anything state, I think there's a DMV in there too. So there's a lot of people in and out of the building all the time. And this was set up in the lobby. So anybody could come over. A lot of people just came over at questions. And then there was a chair set up and people that were busy. Some people just sat down to chat for a little bit. And some people sat down to knit and, it was just really interesting at that on that day there were several people that had lost their job that sat down and so they didn't know each other but they got to talk about how they just lost their job and all of a sudden I have business cards being passed around because somebody else was working and they knew someplace they were hiring and it was just this beautiful thing that happened and the nice thing is usually I sit down with this May has moved back to Malaysia but you know I I'm the keeper of this project now I sit down and I'm knitting somebody comes and joins me and soon enough, like, I can just sort of sit back and listen, you know, because the person who sits next to me that I talk to about the project, they will tell the next person who comes and sit next to them. This is what this project is about. Yes, you can join in here. You don't know how to knit here. Let me show you. You know, so people really sort of take it over and it's their project too. And I have people, I have a blog. Um, I think it's, if you Google knitting networking, you can find it. Um, but I, for the longest time, I used to document it. And I actually had people who would like follow it and see where was it going next. And then they would go and they would join it, you know, so then they could tell other people, hey, I knit this part before. <laughs> so really just nice, you know, like creating a community, like an instant one, but also sort of a long term one for people who had participated and I, like had that experience, you know, like that positive experience with knitting. Um, and, I, I, and I think that that's, there's just something beautiful about that. And then, you know, like, you could obviously do that too. You know, like if it's some a skill that you're trying to teach somebody, it's nobody says that everybody has to sit and work on their own little individual thing. You could you could bring it all together that you're working on the same thing, you know, to, to also sort of like emphasize this of like bringing people together. And people start out talking about knitting. This guy here who, who sat down with me and I taught him how to knit. We got to talk about how football players use it to like strengthen their you know, like their muscles and their fingers. And we just took on to talk about all sorts of different things. And I think that that's just beautiful. You know, we connected over this and, you know, we never met before, but we had sort of an intimate conversation. <laughs> so we can move on to the next slide. And obviously if there's any comments or questions, you know, fire away. <laughs> Okay. 
Nothing. No comments. No, nope, nothing. nothing right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were waiting for me. No, no. I just I see. You know, I since I'm not checking, I just see the number go up. So, um, this one is just called plasticity or plasticity, and this was this is sort of like thinking about like engaging people in projects. You know, like you can do that at many different levels, and in this, I'm just. I just brought that into this because it, this is like minimal participation, but still building ownership and connection with people. So at my job, um, I worked in a photo lab, as you heard in the song. That was when I graduated. I continued working at Columbia College is where I went. And I continued working in the photo lab. And um, I st we um, printed with digital, you know, like the digital printing, you have these big printers, you have the big ink cartridges and all the big ink cartridges came in this blue bag. And um, I was sort of interested in the whole like recycling and, you know, like the city of Chicago, it was uh, Mayor Richard Daly at the time. There was this very, there was this blue bag recycling program. There was a lot of discussion if it was working or not working, it was real or not real. And so my idea was to make sort of a commentary on this and then make the Chicago skyline out of this blue recyclable plastic. Um, and it was, really hard i will tell you i'll give a fair warning and tell you all that uh, i developed carpal tunnel from doing this because it was very hard i ended up having to knit with um chopsticks because knitting needles kept breaking because the material was so tough and um so i ended up stopping there i wanted to do the whole skyline but it i, I stopped there what you see is what it is but what i asked was that for people to work that worked with me was for them to collect the the blue material you know whenever they would start a new cartridge just make sure you know stick it in my cubby and uh you know like and sometimes you know because when we were not busy i would just sit and knit you know like knit on it and work on it or sit and cut up the strips i would cut it up in these thin blue strips so it became yarn so i could knit from it and sometimes people help me with doing that and so it was like everybody was asking about it like how is it coming along when are you going to be showing it you know like because they there was ownership in the fact that they collected the material or um, participate, you know, like participated in like cutting it up, which was very sort of hands off participation, but still, you know, a way to sort of build community around this piece. And obviously, so we, also awareness, <laughs> you know. So, Annie, we have some comments. Maggie said the group co collaboration and the connection to the trauma is huge. Mine is a forever family, and we adopted our kids from foster care. It's a never ending process of healing but progress is made with things like this. And then Elder said, knitting together looks like it's a great engaging experience. It is, and you know, like the, the it is, it, got, it does sort of become meditative because you sit there and you repeat the same motion. And you know, like when, you, when you're doing it by yourself, you know, like I've also knit things, you know, all the 20, scarf, 20 plus scarves that I knit. You know, when you're doing that, there is the, I used to do it when I was riding the train, right? So it's just like your mind would just go. So it'd be like a good time to sort of like reflect and reflecting we all know, like that's also good for like healing and, and, and stuff. And, but you know, like the knitting together is, you know, like once you get the hang of it, you can talk about anything. You know? <laughs> and so, you know, like, and, and with, with this, you know, like, which is a little bit of a different kind, you know, like also like building this, um, like th that you've like ownership and that you feel like you belong to something. Like there's a lot of people that belong to this because they collected the plastic bags for me, right? And so um, I said in on another webinar, um, I was a teaching artist for CAPE, uh, Chicago Arts Partnership in Education for I think over nine years. And that organization, um, sorry, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> that happens every now and then. <laughs> um, I'll get back to it. Um, I think, I, yeah, I think you were saying that a lot of people could participate, and then you were saying you were um, connecting that to um, what you did with Kate. Yeah, and it being yeah. reflective and meditative, it'll come back. Yeah, it'll come back because we're, we're, if we go to the next slide, where I think we're getting close to talking about the Cape stuff, so <laughs> so we can move on to the next one. And sorry, oh, so this is sort of an in between. So. Before I mentioned that my student advice are talking about, it's all about getting your name out there. So this is another little project that I did. It initially, it started out that I would just take it very literal. You know, I graduated and I needed to get my work out there, myself out there to get exhibits, get work, you know, all this stuff. And I would just make this sign with my name and go stand somewhere in public holding it up, high traffic area. The largest image that you see is I'm standing on the stairs of the Art Institute in Chicago right before they opened. Other people that are standing there waiting are not just looking 
at me. They're waiting to get into the museum. <laughs> but a lot of people would come up and ask, who is Annie Holm? Have you been waiting for her for a long time? You know, just ask me questions and, you know, like just a good in a way to engage with, you know, create connection and engagement with other people. Um, and, you know, many fun, fun things came out of it. And this was also, you know, like I would always tell people just Google her, you know, and then one of the things that would come up when you Googled my name was this blog where I posted all these different pictures on, uh, you know, like this was sort of in Google. I mean, it's been around, but we just all started using it a lot, right? Um, and then the last image that you see on there um, is actually a childhood friend of mine who, was, who made this shirt that said my name, because what I did was that um, I had people that I worked with in this photo lab, they were kept saying, well, you should make bumper stickers or you should do this. And I would totally put one on my car. And so I just made like a day where I invited everybody to, you know, participate in this project by going somewhere and holding up a sign with my name to get it out there. And so I had, uh, people sharing this um, with everyone. And uh, I had strangers, I had friends, I had childhood friends that made signs and went somewhere and um, stood with a sign and I had somebody else take a picture and then send it to me, you know, to post to build this any home community, you know, like people that I knew or got to know through this. Uh, and I also sort of had a little bit of following with that, like a couple of people would Everywhere, every time they went traveling, they would bring a sign and then do the picture, you know, participating community that way. Um, so we can move on to the next slide. Um, I realized too, we're um, sort of running out of time, uh, running out of time a little bit. So I, I'm just gonna have you um, play this and then I will quickly talk about it. So I um, worked as a teaching artist for CAPE for uh, almost nine years. And the idea is that you, um, that they, that organization, they pair up uh, contemporary artists with um, teachers in uh, predominantly uh, CPS, so Chicago Public Schools, and then you develop um, projects together. Um, you develop the project together with the teacher, so you collaborate with the teacher, but you also collaborate with the, with the students. students. And typically you would develop a project that um, is connected to an academic uh, content. So in this instance, for example, we were learning about, they were learning about the Holocaust and they were reading a couple of different books about it. And it's actually two classes together. So it's about 70 kids in this classroom, you know, like we did it all together. And then um, we also did a field trip to the, um, the museum that's in Skokie, uh, the Illinois Holocaust Museum. And then we came together and made this performance and it's okay, you can turn up the volume a little bit again. We, um, together with the students, we developed this performance like this happening. Um, and the students you know, came up with most of it all of their own, um, that we were gonna create this, um, this statement about being an upstander and standing together and unity, you know, to, to you know, stop bullying, but also, you know, like reflecting on what happened in the Holocaust where people were being uh, ratted out, you know, to do with people being, um, you know, excluded and, you know, like being taken aside, but be, instead of that being an upstander and like, um, you know, coming together as these two classes. So if you notice, there is no talking. We have 70 fifth grader, uh, yeah, fifth graders together <laughs> in one space. They, uh, in the lunchroom, they got up, they connected holding hands. They walked out of the museum, as you saw, they formed this circle. There is like this open horse preserve right outside of the museum. So they crossed the road. We had all the chaperones, you know, like block the street. We had traffic stop. They crossed the road and they went over they made this circle. They still didn't talk, as you can see. And they stood there for about two minutes or so. And then they, as you will see, they will undo the circle and they will go back, still no talking, and they get on the bus and then they talk and then they drive off. <laughs> but we, um, but this experience is very unique, right? And I was really sort of like the teachers, we were talking about like, is this gonna be able to we're going to be able to make this happen. They're going to talk. They're going to not listen. Or, you know, like even though we came up with all of this together, but they just took such great ownership in this. And as you can see, they came, they did it. Nobody said a word and everything was perfect. Like it's the most perfect experience I ever had working with that many people at one time. And it really, you know, like I ended up working with some of the kids the following year in another class and they kept referring back to this experience. It's really great. 
Um, we can move on to the next slide. If it will, let us move on. These are just a couple other examples that I've done uh, as a teaching artist going in and collaborating with teachers in school. So as you see, there's one, uh, I worked together with one school, Pioneer School here in West Chicago. We did the stream project. Uh, we got the township to donate wood chips and we, you know, together they came up with a design what we were gonna do. We wanted to send a positive message out and in West Chicago there's a little tiny airport. So we were thinking about people flying across, you know, would see that we send this message to dream out into the world. Um, the circular, very colorful circles that you see there was, uh, I worked at the George Washington High School on the south side of Chicago. And we were trying, the lunchroom was really depressing and we wanted to uplift it and make it a little bit more engaging and interactive. So together with this group of students, we came up with creating this wall of exchange. So these are old cans, like all cans, soup cans, uh, coffee creamer cans, any sort of tins and cans that we got the community, like the school community, teachers, students, parents to collect for us. And then we painted them and we screwed them into the wall and it looked really cool and very textural because they're all different sizes. But the idea was that people could, if they didn't want something, they could put it in there and somebody else could take it. So it's like free cycle, if anybody of you are familiar with that. So it's an, a possibility to, to exchange things. And we left messages in there, you know, positive messages. So somebody could also, oh, there's a piece of paper and take that out and read the message. So, and then the last um, piece here is just, it's a close up of a painting where uh, we did this at Gary Elementary School here in West Chicago, where the kids came up, they drew a map of their community, and then they together created like a, a community map, how they would like to see their community look. And so this is what it is. They wanted a lot of green areas, they want a lot of water, and then there's a goodwill right there, and then there's a train tracks and the, the path. So we can move on to the next slide. So again, you know, like bringing the kids together. So I'm going to rest my voice. I think I have a little bit of time. We can watch this video and uh, I'll, I can talk about it if there's any questions, but just go ahead and play it with the sound on. And this is a project that I've also done here in West Chicago where I live. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, there are people have been asking me, what is this going to be done? <laughs> I really am excited about this. I'm going to be very proud every time I come driving down Washington. United Way is very, very happy to be a part of this. This art project is such a great symbol of people of a community coming together and excitement and children with their parents and grandparents as they stood in line to have their pictures with their hands taken. We are so lucky to have such a talent in our community who is willing to take on such a project and donate her time and artistic expertise to bring our community out and together. I know that I have my hands up here along with a lot of you all. This fall, I had the opportunity and the honor to collaborate with the people of West Chicago to photograph the hands that represent this community. All the hands were cut out, and then there were layers to create this mural. So close to 950 people had a hand in making this piece, so to speak. We are very excited to be here to dedicate this mural. This serves as a reminder of what we can do when we are in this together. Holding hands is typically defined as an act of physical intimacy involving two or more people, from the mother and child to the husband and wife, and from children playing a game to protesters forming a human wall. We reach out for somebody's hand to show that we are in this together. Inspired by the formation of relationships and building new networks in this together, seek to symbolize and depict a moment loaded with excitement for what's next. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To all of you for lending a hand. I could have not made this piece without you. Enjoy. Everybody. Three, two, one. So uh, this was a project that um, I, you know, collaborated with my entire community. It was initiated by the Cultural Arts Commission here in West Chicago, and it was a collaboration with the entire school district to put this on. So this is sort of like a big collaboration, maybe a little bit hard, but I sort of like the idea of like bringing people together and, you know, like 
it was so funny working with the city of West Chicago. All the public works people were like, it's just going to be a matter of time before somebody <laughs> tags this piece. To this day, nobody has tagged it. The landscapers scratched it when they were over there doing work. They have scratched the piece and, you know, with time the piece is cracked. But it's really interesting because I think people just feel like they have ownership in it. So Gris uh, Griselda said, wow, that was super cool and very touching. And I just agree. I, I, I love all the work, but that probably is my favorite one because the level of coordination, the symbology, just beautiful, beautiful. And for me, it was a really great experience. You know, I met so many people doing this, you know, people that I just hadn't, you know, met before and I think it's part of why I ended up getting the job that I got because now I work for the school district because people got to know me and it is just not just for that but people also got to know each other and it's you know everybody was like so excited about it being put up and people would go there and find their hand and people would like I had my hand in there too you know like so you know like building community you know again you know like this was you didn't have to be face to face with somebody but you know reflecting back oh I was part of that too and building community that way so for me, this is one of my favorite, favorite projects of all times. You know, it's just so many people that were involved and, you know, helping me just doing the photographing and all this stuff. But we can move on to the next slide while I'm talking about that. Um, oh, so um, just checking on time here. I know we're getting short. So um, from that project, you know, like the following year, I ended up doing this other project where I was invited to go back to Denmark, my homeland, and in Aarhus, which is the second biggest city, there is a small art gallery run, uh, somebody's running in an apartment inside this big apartment complex. And this apartment complex is sort of like well known for and referred to as the ghetto in Denmark because of the population of people who ended up living there. It's a very beautiful apartment complex and it was designed in the 70s with like lots of, you know, like modern, all this. But the problem was it was way too expensive. And then at some point there was a huge influx of um, migrant workers and refugees. And somehow they all ended up being you know pulled together living in this apartment complex and that's what it is today it is a day you know like when i was young like a teenager my parents would never want me to set foot there it was a ghetto it was dangerous you would get shot you know like there was you know people of all sorts of colors and in denmark is extremely homogenous if you look at me you know like we're so white we're transparent you know like you can see everything right through the skin and, um, and I, so it's it just, you know, it's this multicultural, like complete opposite of Denmark, right? And um, had I been asked to do this project many years ago, you know, like when I was, I was living there and sort of, you know, was raised with this mentality of like the other is, you know, like the stranger is, oh yeah, we, we're just gonna stay away from this. But having lived here in the United States and my husband is um, Filipino American, my kids are mixed, I might have friends, you know, my international friends from, you know, when I was in school. And now like I, I have the whole spectrum of, you know, everybody. And I really, I'm so curious about learning about other people and learning about their values and cultures and tradition. So when I was invited to do this, I was like, yes. And so they gave me an apartment to live there for five weeks and um, to do this project. And what I did was uh, I created these language rugs. So I invited people who lived in the apartment complex to come into my apartment uh, and, and work with me. I, the living room, as you see, I set it up as a workshop and people could come in. And then we talked about what languages that they speak and like the value of language. And if they were to think about the languages they speak, what colors would it, you know, all the different languages they speak, what colors would they be? And then we made these rugs out of, you know, like the different colors. So they were braiding, you know, so even you can see in the background, little kids are being part of it. We were braiding the rugs and then we so you know, stitch them together. So they become these circles. And then in all the little picture, you see them all on the floor. So that was sort of the final, we invited everybody to come back and look at the rugs as they were on the floor. Um, so really great experience, really good connecting. And, you know, again, this is probably more similar to that, like this, the quilting thing, you know, like, because we were sitting there and I had a mom who was from Kuwait and her daughter was her daughters were there and we were sitting and talking and she was talking about oh yeah you know like when I first um migrated or you know moved I actually went to Pakistan and lived there for a year and her daughters who were like 
18, 19, never knew that. And they're like, what? We never knew you lived <laughs> in um, Pakistan. So it's just super interesting, um, the stories and the connections that were built and deepened through this. And we can move to the next slide. I see that the web awesome. the is coming up. <laughs> um, so, um, for the last part of this, you know, like I know we're really short on time, but we do, I do have a little uh, activity that I hope that you guys will participate in. Um, this is something you can do together with your family or you can do it by yourself to create sort of the, a, a little bit of community among us today. Uh, but I would like you to get some paper and pen or pencil. It could be markers, uh, crayons, anything, and then draw out the words, um, be strong families or be strong. Um, and then you can color it in, design it however you want. And then you're welcome to snap a photo of it, post it on social media and tag. The different tags are there for Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and then you can also place your artwork in the wind in your window to inspire people who are walking by. So I just, you know, I did my, my little one here um, that I'm going to be putting up in my window uh, for later and uh, just to sort of, you know, create a little community among us today. So I'm sorry, I had so many things to say and I talked a lot. I see the survey popped up. So I hope, you know, like that you participate in that. And then I'm sure Alexandra has something to say. <laughs> well, this is probably the quickest webinar I have experienced, which is, a, I mean, it's just, I'm, it's been excellent. I've really, really enjoyed you, Annie. Um, Dee, next slide. I'm fascinated. When the world opens back up, I'm going to have to come see, uh, visit some of the places where your art is when I come to Chicago. Yeah, Next you, slide. Can, you can skip through because I think I have a bonus slide in case I ran out of time. So <laughs> skip through that too. Skip, skip. <laughs> oh, I would love to know what that is. Okay, so upcoming um, webinars tomorrow, you're in a treat. We have When the World's on Fire and You're Beyond Max by COVID, What Then? which will be hosted by our CEO, Kathy Wolf, and Robin Harvey, who's our National Director of Training. So please join us tomorrow. Next slide. And really quickly, um, Dee said, Annie, I wish I could listen to you introduce your art all day. Being an artist myself, I resonate so much. I totally agree. Really quickly, let's do our closing, hashtag Amplify, and then of course post on social media and tag Be Strong Families. I'm going to say hashtag Get to Know Annie Holmes. That's my hashtag, Amplify Annie Holmes. Any more hashtags before we close? We have probably about 30 seconds. And just again, thank you so much for sharing your art. Um, what really resonated with me was that it's like your collaborative art is also like a metaphor for what we do at Be Strong Families, as far as co-creating our curriculum and our parent cafes with um, the people we intend to do it with. And so that just kept popping out as a theme for me and how powerful art and just co-creation and collaboration is. So just bless you on your journey. I so enjoyed you. Elder said, uh, hashtag Amplify Love Art. We have any more before we have to go? I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me on. And I'm sorry, I feel like I rushed through this, but I just, you know, I love sharing about these things. I wish I could do this all day too. My voice probably not, but. <laughs> uh, Shamira says, um, hashtag very therapeutic. And Gisela said, thank you. So thank you everybody for joining us. We appreciate you. Um, we appreciate you, Annie. Thank you, Dee, for being with us. Um, Robin Harvey said, great um, webinar. I got a few resource ideas for our program. So did I, Robin. You know, my mind is clicking. And we will see you back again tomorrow. Kathy will be back and she will be hosting tomorrow. So if you or your colleagues would like to host a webinar, um, just contact Kathy at bestrongfamilies.net and we would love to have you. Dee has posted a recording of the slides. We hope you all have a beautiful day and we'll see you back again tomorrow. Thank you so much for having me and thank you so much to everybody participating and all the nice comments too. I really enjoyed it as well. Bye-bye, take care. Bye. Bye.